Well, hello and welcome to episode three of Anabolic University. Today we're going to cover OCT and post cycle therapy, on cycle therapy and post cycle therapy, because they're the same thing. The point being, this is why I exist, is to bring you guys, to protect you from shutdown, from anabolic steroid use, and poorly educated doctors giving you crappy HCTs, HRT cycles designed to make you lifetime drug addicts. I'm sorry this seems negative. It's really hard for me not to be angry at people who lash out and hurt their patients just to make money. Please enjoy this. It means a lot to me that you're taking the time to watch. What's a cycle? A cycle is when you use anabolic steroids for presumably a fixed amount of time. And a post-cycle therapy would be the therapy after the cycle. Post-cycle therapy works best when there's on-cycle therapy. So PCT is post-cycle therapy. On-cycle therapy is OCT. Super confusing, right? No, it's not. Why do you need it? Because the number one side effect of steroids in SARMs is the same as SARMs. That's what makes SARMs fucking worthless is it shuts down your natural test production. So, if your body produces luteinizing hormone in the brain, it travels through here to your testicles, and your testicles produce testosterone, and your fat cells convert that testosterone to estrogen, and the estrogen binds to the luteinizing hormone onto um, the pituitary, and shuts off the production of luteinizing hormone. Why does it do that? Because it doesn't want all that testosterone building up. So once there's too much testosterone, it converts it to estrogen. And then to estrogen tells your brain to stop making testosterone. So what happens is if you inject steroids into your body or take oral steroids, your brain makes some of those into estrogen, and then estrogen shuts off the production of your natural testosterone. So if you're not taking testosterone, you're taking anabolic steroids, and you have no testosterone coming in, now you're not making any testosterone, now stuff won't work like your penis. Um, lots of men lose their girlfriends or wives because they use steroids because their dick stops working. And no one thinks it's going to happen to them because they think they're a tough guy. It doesn't matter how many bullets you can fire. It doesn't matter how much punches you can take in the face. It doesn't matter how tough you are in real life. Your body chemistry, this particular thing, is kind of irrelevant in comparison. A lot of masculine traits come from testosterone as a male hormone, so one would assume you have a lot if you're a macho dude. That doesn't mean you're not susceptible to estrogen. Estrogen might fuck you up. Having no testosterone, no matter how high your production is, you might be susceptible. So, to prevent against this, people use on-cycle therapy. Now, what's that? On-cycle therapy could work in two mechanisms. It could either stop conversion of testosterone to estrogen, which in Thor's hammer, I do that with the 7-8 benzo and the 3-5 endosta, or you could use prescription breast cancer meds. The original was extemisin or aromacin, which is a suicide inhibitor. It kills the aromatase enzymes. I can't put that in Thor's hammer. That would be illegal. It's a prescription drug. So, I use 7 8 benzo, which is also a suicide inhibitor. Instead of killing 65% like extemisin, it kills 50% approximately. In the studies used, um, you know, I'm, I believe 
We're going to pretend that there are no double-blind human trials. That doesn't mean there aren't. We're going to pretend there isn't, just for legal purposes, because God knows nothing's more important in the U.S. than fucking people over and taking their money through lawyers. Fuck people who try to heal people or help, right? So I'm going to pretend that this stuff might not work because that's what I'm legally required to tell you. Otherwise, I'm opening myself and my company up to lawsuits. However, none of the people who make drugs have both of these. A medical doctorate and a biochemistry degree. And if you can't read them now, you can go to the website, Dr. Todd, um, ToddLeamD.com, go to Accreditations. It not only has my diplomas on there, it also has signed copies of my board exams. So you can see with seals of approval that I passed them. I actually got a 95, which is pretty much unheard of. So that being said, I don't do this because I'm a shitty doctor. I'm doing this because everyone needs help. And most of the doctors who do this stuff, who give people steroid shots, don't protect them from shutdown, and they do that intentionally. They do it so that you're a lifetime drug addict. It's why they cut out women's thyroids and give them thyroid pills. Nothing scares a woman more, in my experience, as a coach of hundreds of women, that over the years, than being fat. And there's a number of reasons for that. I'm not going to get into, I'm not going to blame society. The point is they're afraid of being fat. So if the doctor makes it set up so that they will get fat, if they don't buy these drugs from him, they buy a permission slip from him, and then they have to take the prescription slip to a different crook who then sells them to her. So the point is that if you don't, you know, they're terrified of getting fat, so you've got a lifetime customer. Same thing with dudes. We're going to give you a shot that's supposed to make you more masculine, but if you don't come back and get that shot, you're going to be sick and tired and low energy. Your penis won't work. Your woman will leave you and she'll take your kids. So now you're a lifetime drug addict. Well, Thor was the defender of mankind. So I made Thor's hammer to protect you from shitty asshole doctors who are going to try to fuck you up. Because what they do is they prescribe testosterone as hormone replacement therapy. And then they don't give you the arimidex or the extemosine or the Lectro to stop the conversion of testosterone and estrogen. So the signal's there and it shuts you off double fold. The other thing they don't usually do is prescribe HCG. HCG works like luminizing hormone and will bind to the testes and stimulate testosterone. Now the flaw of HCG is because it's like luminizing hormone, it binds to the pituitary and shuts off production of luminizing hormone. So now you're now a different type of dependent drug addict. I don't use HCG. I use sodium deaspartate, the scientifically proven effective version and form of deaspartic acid, which has been proven not to work. That's why you've heard there's conflicting studies. A lot of scientists use the racemic, use the conjugate base and the standard acid as interchangeable, and they're not. It has to do with processing in the stomach acids. So the, the base I use, which is the sodium deaspartate, the deprotonated version of deaspartic acid, actually is the one that's been scientifically proven in double-blind human studies to increase testosterone by 40%. Just that one ingredient. I also include a bunch of stuff like vitamin D that cofactors in, that carries in the cholesterol to the testes so it can, the testosterone can be made from cholesterol. Because you can't print money if you don't have any silk paper to print it on, right? So you can't make testosterone without cholesterol. So obviously you got to eat cholesterol, and that's why my diet is I have eggs in the morning, is so that you can actually make testosterone from the Thor's hammer. Duh. So the diets are free. On the website, tabliamd.com, just scroll down to Dr. Lee's Nine Steps, and there's a free diet in there that's going to help you with your products. Or if anybody wants to have testosterone, that's how you do it. Use the diet. So, point is, that being said, 
I use the deaspartic acid because it's better than the ACG because it stimulates the brain to produce LH and it stimulates the testes to produce testosterone. So I'm using things to shut off the con conversion of that test to estrogen. I'm using stuff to stimulate both the brain to release LH and the testes to release testosterone. But I didn't stop there. I used about seven or eight different things on top of that. Because you're going to say, well, what about having no estrogen? Isn't that shitty? Yeah, your HDL goes through the toilet and you'll get heart disease. That's why I didn't use the prescription drugs that knock out 97 and 99 to 65% permanently. I used something that knocks out 50% of it permanently, the aromatase enzyme. So you're never going to make as much estrogen, which, but, and it might turn back on after three or four months because you'll make more of the aromatase enzymes eventually. It's not like you're permanently changed, but you're, you could take Thorsamer for a month, go off of it, you're still going to get benefits of it for several months afterwards. The other thing is, I put a different one in there, so it temporarily balances the remaining aromatase enzymes about 50%. So you get about a quarter of the amount of estrogen produced. So you have enough estrogen to do the good stuff, like building muscle through the estrogen A receptor, the estrogen B receptor, you also have enough estrogen to um, bind to your liver and produce HDL. Now I put in some estrogen receptor blockers in there because a lot of people want Clomid and they want Tamoxifen. And both of them proven to increase luteinizing hormone, Tamoxifen more, and both of them have been proven to do other things in the body. I think Tamoxifen has been proven to upregulate HDL. So there's some estrogen receptor blinder, binders so even though we've cut down estrogen production by about 75%, we've also bound the receptors with moderators so that even though free 25% estrogen doesn't do what you don't want it to, which is what you want it to. There's a bunch of other stuff in Thor's Hammer, but this isn't a Thor's Hammer video. This is a PCT on cycle therapy video. I needed to explain to you the proper way of using on cycle therapy. It's not to use drugs like ACG, Tamoxifen, Arimidex, all of these breast cancer meds and women meds to try to make a man more masculine. You're going to use a bunch of women meds, um, like anti cancer meds. Mm, not so smart because they have other problems. It's too strong. So instead, you run Thor's Hammer underneath your cycle so when you take anabolic steroids, they don't shut your shit off. I've already boosted natural production. Now you're thinking, well, wait a minute. If a healthy person can take Thor's Hammer, why the fuck would they need steroids? They really don't. Typically, I would, most people use Thor's Hammer and when they want to use gear, I say, could you please do me a favor? And just, if you're going to have to use illegal drugs, try Anavar, since it's the most safe thing ever. And the next video will be about Anavar. This is Anabolic University Episode 3. Four will be Anavar. And I will read you my article about Anavar. Because I think I could, just like, if you ever read, had an audiobook by Stephen King, having Stephen King read you a Stephen King book is way fucking cooler than reading a Stephen King book yourself. I shit you not. But his voice isn't that great in my personal opinion. When I read you my article, it'll probably be a lot more fun. And then I'll talk about it. But it's so much, it's one of my favorite articles of all time is the end of our article. And that's next on Anabolic University episode four. But back to this topic, post cycle therapy and on cycle therapy. So we've established that Thor's Hammer is in my personal opinion, the best form of bio cycle therapy. Now you could still run other shit on top of it. If you don't trust me, okay. But you don't have to run as much shit. You could run 10 milligrams of tamoxifen as post cycle therapy. You could run half a milligram of Arimidex as post cycle therapy. Am I getting ahead of myself? Not so much. Because what I'm saying is, if you run the on cycle therapy or natural test booster, Thor's hammer plus the test booster that comes with it, then Anavar alone would be so amplified, that's enough anabolic storage for you. Now, Anavar only decreases natural production by 56%. So that means you really aren't stepping on a motherfucking thing. And Anavar is out of your system in like three days. 
and it's not liver toxic. It actually is prescribed to heal the liver. So it's just straight up a no-brainer. It's actually safer than any of the SARMs, which cause shutdown way more than NMR. So, that being said, if you were to use an injectable anabolic steroid with a longer ester tail, like Sipinate, like many HRT doctors prescribe, it's going to be in your system so long, you're never going to get your shit turned back on. So the most important step to PCT is often to switch to a probe before you go off your long-acting drugs. Some people are very stubborn and they think that their shitty doctor knows what he's doing and they stick in a sip. You don't understand, the reason he's prescribing you sip is because it's got a 14-day half-life. So he can legitimately say to you, well, because it's only every 14 days, you can come to the office. That's just what the fucker can bill you. The correct way to do it would be using a long-acting with a short-acting so you can modulate it better. They've created one of those called Sustanon, which is of course illegal because if you could get your hands on it, you wouldn't need these doctors now, would you? You could just watch this video and do it yourself. They don't want you to do that. They want to control you because that's where they make their money from, is control and fear. So, that being said, if you switch to a short-acting drug like Pro Test Probe, you could then go off. Now, the drugs have to be out of your system to turn your system back on. Now, of course, if you're using Thor's Hammer and using something mild like Anivar, you really never shut your shit off in the first place. So post-cycle therapy would merely be stay on Thor's Hammer. So a very safe, simple cycle would be go on Thor's Hammer. If you had to use anabolic steroids, the safest one's Anivar. A man with Thor's Hammer could get benefits from as little as 20 or 30 milligrams. You don't need 50 or 100. And after eight weeks of that, after the myostatin levels are high and you can't grow any more muscle, no matter how much you want to, unless you add IGF-1 to override the myostatin, you go off, but you stay on the force hammer, and that should boost you back up to where you were before you went on the anabar. Then when you go off the force hammer, you should go back to where you were before you went on the force hammer. The force hammer doesn't push you down, it builds you up. The other stuff pushes your natural production down. Therefore, you go into post-cycle therapy. Now, let's say you go off. I believe it is tryptoralin or chasmoralin, I get the two confused, is 100 micrograms. I'm pretty sure it's trypto. It is 100 micrograms, and then it'll turn back on your LH production as long as you don't use HCG. If you, you just run a floor's hammer under it, if you do use HCG, you got to use HCG for 14 days, maybe a 500 to 1,000 milligrams. It is trypto. It is tryptoralin. I, I was right. It's tryptoralin, and the units of It only comes in one way, so you just use the whole bottle. Um, I believe it is about 500 to 1,000 micrograms a day, basically. 66% of your weekly load of test would be the appropriate HCG supposedly for the first 10 to 14 days. When you get the HCG insert from the pharmacy, there are seven different protocols. That's because no one knows how the fuck to use it. That's why Thor's Hammer, to me, in my opinion, is a little safer than HCG. So the smart move would be tryptoralin with Thor's Hammer, and then, assuming 10 to 14 days later, everything's not tip-top, then you could go on 10 milligrams of tamoxifen twice a day, or 25 mic milligrams of Clomid twice a day, or you go half and half, whatever, whatever floats your boat. And then I'd also, of course, run a half a milligram of Arinodex the whole time. A lot of people say you don't run those two, I could sit, definitely say that's a smart move, that if you were running a half a milligram of Aromadex on cycle, and you were running 10 milligrams of tamoxifen on cycle with Thor's hammer, then you would just stay on that, and then after your last injection, so let's say you know that you're on 500 in athate, and you know it's got a seven day half life. So that means you really need to wait about four weeks for it to be out of your system.
That's why after two weeks, you would switch to probe. You'd run that for the remaining two. So you'd stay at the half level point. Then when you go off probe three days later, you were down to nothing test except what would naturally produce. You could hit your trypto, um, trypto railing, stay on the 10 milligrams to maxifen, stay on your half a milligram of aromidex every other day, stay on Thor's hammer, and everything should go back to normal as soon as possible. So a lot of you are like, wow, this is really confusing. It's not. I honestly, what I would do is just run Thor's hammer as on cycle therapy, and then after you're, you're, when you want to go off, you switch to a short acting for a couple weeks, you go off that, you wait a couple days, you use 100 milligrams or micrograms, you got to look that one up. I don't know that drug that well, tryptorelin. And um, you then just stay on the tamoxifen and you stay on the Arubidex and you're cutting down the estrogen production, you're binding the estrogen receptor with something that does the opposite effect, either the clomid or the tamoxifen will stimulate LH release, just like the trypto. You stay away from ACG for post-cycle, because remember, ACG pushes down LH. You need the LH to turn this test back, the testicles back on. And anything that stimulates LH stimulates FSH. FSH makes sperm, LH makes testosterone. But without testosterone, you don't make sperm. So, and you can't inject testosterone and get sperm. So, it's very simple and people really overcomplicate it. You just extend the OCT after you stop using injectable test and add the trypto to boost the normal signal. Do you need trypto? No. Does, do people get good results with it? Not that I've heard anecdotally. All I've heard is you really don't ever want to go off. You want to stay HRT dose and blast and cruise, or you use Thor's hammer as your HRT and you just cycle with something mild. 